the electric field at a distance h from the center point perpendicular here of a finite line of charge. The finite line has length capital L and the total charge of the line is Q, capital Q. So my linear charge density is simply given by the total charge divided by the total length and this is the charge density lambda. So to find the charge in this little region dx you would simply take lambda times dx and that's dq. At the point p this electric field contribution for dq is going to point away along this line of sight here away from point p and the strength is going to be dq over r squared which is the inverse square law times the constant of the electric force. And since I'm gonna have one of these on this side that pushes me upward northeast, the x components will cancel. So I'm interested in the cosine of theta. That's what's gonna survive. So cosine of theta, which we can get from the right triangle. This is a 90 degree angle. The cosine of theta is h, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse which is R. H over R. My R is nothing more than, via the Pythagorean theorem, the square root of x squared plus h squared. So this is cosine of theta, the constant of electric physics, force field. And this is dq, which is lambda dx over R squared, which is x squared plus h squared. And we can integrate from minus L over two to plus L over two, or, simply from 0 to L over 2 and put the 2 in there, which is what I'm going to do because of the symmetry. There's a cosine theta for this one and a cosine theta for that one. They're going to basically be paired and doubling up. So we're going to integrate from the middle to the end and multiply by 2. I have lambda h over my constant and I have constants I have dx over this one half power and this power is one plus a half is three halves. Now at this point textbooks will refer to the integral tables and there's nothing wrong with doing that. We do that most of the time in physics courses. However in this case I'm going to show you how to do this integral because the method is very very powerful in physics and engineering. When you see these things uh, here I'm going to strip out the simple basic idea here. I'm going to let h be 1 so that I can look at a simpler integral and do this one. And the trick I use here will work then with h. I'll show you how we can adapt it. Trigonometry doesn't really look promising because of the 3 halves power, the denominator, and doesn't look like it. If we had a 1 minus x squared with the square root up here then you could do trig and then like one minus the cosine squared is the sine and and that kind of thing but here it doesn't look promising we're going to use the binomial expansion formula the binomial theorem or the binomial coefficients and by the time you're an upper level physicist you really want to have this mastered one plus z to the nth power is 1 plus nz plus n times n minus 1 over, over 2 times z squared and then this is 3 factorial in the denominator and I like to remember this in this way say I want some arbitrary one I'm trying to figure out say the third one so this is the zero of term the first term the second term and the third term what I do is I make the z cubed since it's going to be the third case 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then I count forward from 1 in the denominator, 1, 2, 3. And I use 3 digits. See, I have 3 numbers. I put down and I multiply them. See, 1 times 2 times 3. And here I count backwards from n. n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and multiply them. So that's a neat way to remember this. Here I have 2. See n, n minus 1, and here I have 1 times 2, and that's z squared. Here I have just 1, just the n. You can divide by 1 and say, well, I have 1 in the denominator, then I have 1 number in the numerator, counting backwards, well, I just have the n. And here, the 0 of term, we just have the 1. We don't need to worry about anything except for that 1 there. When I look at this power, 
law, we simply have n equals minus 3 halves, so this becomes 1, the n becomes the 3 halves, that's 1, always, always going to be 1, minus 3 halves, and then here, minus 3 halves, and subtract 1, minus 5 halves. And here we're going to subtract another 1. I like to think of this as subtracting 1 and then subtracting 1 again. And then you have the three uh, pieces there. In the denominator, two pieces here because this is the second 0, 1, 2, and this is 3. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Notice that this x is squared there, so z equals x squared. So the z is x squared, and that z squared then becomes x4 and z cubed becomes xx. Now we integrate term by term, and as we integrate term by term, we get the integration for the one gives you x, and that's x cubed over three, and that's x five over five, and that's x to the seventh over seven. Notice that the threes cancel, leaving the one half. The fives cancel, leaving the cute minus one half there again, and the sevens cancel, leaving the cute minus one half. By putting the one half first, cycling it over like this, then take the x, pull it out, so I have one x squared, x4, x6. I have something here very, very similar to what I have up here, except that I'm starting with minus one half instead of minus three halves, but I'm using the same principle of subtracting the one and subtracting the one again. So in other words, this minus three halves is now minus one half. So this result is x times one plus x squared to the minus one half power, which you can write this way. So we have done the integral and summary so far we have this and you see that you need to have the integral with the h squared now, I'm asking you to do this as a practice problem, to work through the steps with the H in there and expand things out and do the parallel trick. Let's see if we can vaguely see why it's going to work. If you pull the H out here, it comes out as H cubed, since you have the square root and the cube. So that's 1 over H cubed. Then you have 1 plus X squared over H squared. Now, we want to let Z equal X over H, so we can have the one plus z squared. And here you want a dz, so you need to divide by h, multiply by h. So this h and this one over h cubed will bring this down to one over h squared, which is what you have there. And then you'll have a dz and a one plus z squared. Well, that will give you z and a one plus z squared. But the z is x over h. That's x over h squared. So you multiply top and bottom by h you'll then bring the h squared in there. So if you didn't follow all that, well, that's a practice problem. I just wanted to show you roughly why it worked. So now we come down here and use this integration result and simply replace this with the result of the integration and evaluate it at 0 and L over 2. Then here I get L over 2 for the x and I get 0 at the lower limit, limit so I'm basically finished here. Let's make sure we have all of our terms. Lambda, h, and constants. 1 over h squared from the integration and then the top limit L over 2 here, L over 2. This is going to become L over L squared over 4 down here, but if I multiply top and bottom by 2, this 2 goes away, and when you bring the 2 inside there, it comes in as a 4, that goes away, and the 4 gets hit with the h squared. So there's where my 4 is. This h knocks this power down 1, h over h squared is 1 over h, so here we have the answer. Now it's nice to have the answer in two forms. If we take the charge density, multiply it by the total length, get the total charge q. So these two forms are equivalent, and we're going to do what all good physicists do, and that is check extreme cases. The first extreme case is the L is equal to zero, and if the L is equal to zero, I have a point charge Q, and so I'm going to use this form that has the Q explicitly shown, and if I put L equal to zero, I simply get the square root of the 4H squared, which comes out as 2H, and now neat thing happens. Twos conspire to give me the 4, 
and the h is conspired to give me h squared and that's exactly what you would expect for a point charge q the k of electricity 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught kq over the r squared which here is the distance h from the charge checks out now when we go for the infinite line of charge then q technically would be infinity but the linear charge density is finite so i want to use this form so if i use this form then i have my constants here i have my one over h and now i let l go off to infinity notice that when l goes to infinity i can neglect the h here and this is simply the square root of l squared l over the square root of l squared is l over l that's one and i simply have these constants times one over h this is the distance perpendicular to the infinite line of charge i'm h away and this is pointing away from that line of charge this is a nice result infinite line of charge electric field